Hello everyone. There is a saying that goes, a gossiper is one who talks to you about others. A bore is one who talks to you about himself. And a brilliant conversationalist is one who talks to you about yourself. Friends, Jesus was a great conversationalist. In the Gospels, there are numerous examples of Jesus asking people questions and engaging in deep conversations with them about their lives. Today's Gospel text is one such example which took place on the third day after the crucifixion and death of Jesus. According to Luke, it so happened that two disciples, greatly confused and deeply saddened by Jesus' suffering, crucifixion and death, had left Jerusalem and were walking toward a village called Emmaus. They were probably returning home. I wonder if they had ever expected to go back to their homes. They had already left everything to follow Jesus. After all, they had hoped that Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel. Yet, as they walked along, they were talking to each other about the events of the previous days. That is, the arrival of Jesus in Jerusalem and the joyful welcome by the residents of the city, his last Passover meal with them, his arrest in the garden, his trials before Pilate and Herod, his torture, crucifixion, death, burial, and the rumors about his resurrection. Friends, while they were talking of these matters, a third person, a stranger, joined them. He asked the two disciples what they were discussing so that he might join in their conversation. At first, the disciples expressed their astonishment at the stranger not having heard of all that had transpired in Jerusalem recently, and then proceeded to tell him that they were speaking of Jesus of Nazareth, a great prophet who had been crucified. Then they told the stranger of the women's story about the empty tomb. At this, the stranger rebuked them for their unbelief and then went on to show them from the whole Old Testament, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. That is, the stranger spoke of Christ, who would have to suffer and die for people's sin before God raised him to life. And as he talked to them, their hearts grew lighter. And when they reached Emmaus, the two disciples invited the strangers to stay and share a meal with them. During the meal, as Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, perhaps remembering the words Jesus had said before, the disciples recognized their companion as Jesus, but he immediately disappeared from their sight. Astonished, they said to each other, that their hearts were burning during the conversation with Jesus, and they hurried back to Jerusalem to report that they had seen the Lord. Friends, as they started their journey, they were trapped in fear, confusion, disappointment and grief. They were without hope. They could neither recognize Jesus nor could understand what the scriptures have said about Jesus. But Jesus' conversation and interpretation of the scriptures prepared them to recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread and return to their friends with hope and joy and give witness to Jesus' resurrection. Friends, what is the message for us? Jesus always walks with us in ways both familiar to us and in ways that remain a mystery. Especially in life's difficult moments, when we experience a demoralizing loss of hope, when we no longer construe our future to be meaningful, when we succumb to the thought that there is no one in whom we can place our hopes, when we abandon ourselves to despair, when we are sad, Jesus is near us and walks beside us to give us courage, strength and hope along the way. Friends, as we walk together, He listens. He communes with us as a friend and savior. He reveals what we cannot see in the natural. He gradually also reveals to us the depth of his relationship. So friends, we can open our hearts to him and we can be very honest with him. 
It is all right to unload all our feelings and tell him all our struggles, disappointments, worries, anger, doubts, fears, guilt, health problems, needs and hopes. He rejoices each time we open our hearts. The more we open our hearts, the more he will reveal himself. Even when we choose to walk away from him and close the door, he never gives up on us. He does not retire upon himself. He remains open. He continues to communicate with us. Friends, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will have supper with him and he with me. Yes, indeed, friends. When we allow Jesus to walk with us, everything will change. Friends, as we walk with him, let us keep our minds and hearts fixed on him and his word. Just as the apostles were seeking the meaning of all that had happened in their lives through the scriptures, so too may we seek God's will for our life through the scriptures. In times of sadness, disappointment, grief, pain and suffering, plus ask God for peace, he has promised peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us converse with Jesus who honors us with his presence. Let us read the divine scriptures frequently to enjoy his intimate friendship. Let us invite him to walk with us, come into our hearts and families, so that he may abide in and with us at all times. Amen. I wish you and your family a blessed and joyful Easter. God bless you.